Number 28. For the reaction Q yields W plus X, the following data were obtained at 30 degrees Celsius. So we have this lovely chart here, which basically says that if I have a, a concentration, right, a molarity for Q initially, the reactant, this, the rate of the reaction is going to go at 6.68 times 10 to the negative 3 molarity per second. Now, just remember that moles per liter is molarity, right? So molarity per second. And it's, it seems like there is three total trials here, right? So this would be trial one, or, or we could call it experiment one. And then this is trial two, and this is trial three. And it seems that as you're increasing in concentration from 0.17 to 0.212 to 0.357, the rate of the reaction is generally increasing as well. So this follows a general trend that if you do have more uh, of your concentration of a reactant, the rate is going to uh, increase. Now for this specific reaction or this specific question, we have to find out, it says, what is the order of the reaction with respect to Q? And then what is the rate law? And then from there, we could find the rate constant. So we have to find out the rate law. Now the rate law is a general formula, which is this. Right, the general rate law formula, maybe what I'll say is I'll say this is the rate law, is always a rate which will equal k. k is the rate constant times by its reactants raised to the orders. So that's what they mean by, you know, what is the order of the reaction with respect to q? The order is just the exponents. And to find the exponents, we are going to use a ratio using these trials. So let's just put a more definite uh, rate law for our needs. Now, in this case, if you are writing a rate law, the only number that you really have to include is your exponents. You don't write down a, a number for rate, and you don't write down what the rate constant is. So it's always going to be rate equals k times the concentration of our specific problem and the reactant that they gave us was Q. And now we don't know what that order is. So now I'm just going to put a variable. And I guess let's choose X, right? But you could choose any variable, A, B, C, D, F, G. So now we have a more specific uh, rate law for us. The only thing is that we don't know what this order is. So we have to find this, we have to solve. And that's where we're going to use our ratios. We're gonna pick two trials and set a ratio uh, to find out the orders. Now a ratio, remember, is just a, you know, a number divided by another number. So in this case, it's gonna be division. We're gonna take one trial and put it over the other trial. And uh, to make the, the math easy for ourselves, generally we will do uh, the higher rate value divided by the lower rate value. Okay. So it doesn't matter which two trials you pick. If you want to just make the math a little bit easier, you'll pick the higher ones over the lower ones. So in this case, I can pick trial two and divide it by trial three because 10 to the negative two is is a higher number than 10 to the negative 3. Um, for trial 3 and 2, since these have the same exponents, that's when you look at the actual numbers. 2.9 is higher than 1.04, so I could do trial 3 over 2, I could do 3 over 1, I could do 2 over 1. If you, if you want to give this a shot, right, I'll pick two trials, and you could do a different one, and see if you get the same order. What I'm going to do is maybe I'll do trial 2 divided by trial, th trial 1. So if you want, you could do 3 over 1, you could do 3 over 2, but I'll choose these two. So this one and this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to just use our specific rate law to plug in the numbers for trial 2 and then divide that by the same formula with trial 1's numbers. So let's go for it. Trial 2 the rate told, or the rate is saying that it's 
0, 4 times 10 to the negative second equals the rate constant, which we don't know, K, but that's okay, times by the concentration of Q at trial 2 is 0 0.212, and then raised to the order, which is what we're trying to solve for, so X. And now, let's divide that by trial 1's values. The rate for trial 1 was 6.68 times 10 to the negative third equals K times by um, trial one's Q value, so 0 0.170, and that's raised to the X. Now why do we set this ratio? Well, K divided by K, even though we don't know what that variable is, it's the same number in theory, so it goes bye-bye. And now we have a simplified uh, you know, ratio formula going on here. Well, I'll divide the rates, and then I will divide the concentration with the x value. So let's work on the rates first. 1.04 times 10 to the negative second divided by 6.68 times 10 to the negative third. Uh, looks good to me. I'm just going to double check. 1.042. Looks good to me. Oh boy. Now at this stage of the game, um, you should get roughly a whole number, but if you get fractions, don't worry about it. Trust the process. So I'm going to just put down my, my long fraction here, 1.5569, maybe I'll cut it off, and then I'll do this as well. So 0.212 divided by 0 0.170, and I get 1.247. That's pretty good. And now it's X. Now, usually we see nice whole numbers, right? We'll usually see like 4 to 2 to the x. We'll see maybe 9 equals 3 to the x. But in this case, we have these, you know, disgusting, uh, uh, I guess, decimal values. But you can work with these because the only thing is that when we're at this stage of the game, we want that x value to drop down into the same line as the 1.247. But there's a, there's a method to the madness here in which you can drop that value to solve for x. And the function that you're going to use is natural log, the ln. So the ln button. So what we can do is if we do the ln of 1.247, that's going to bring that x value down. So now it's on the same playing field and it's not an exponent anymore. But remember, you got to be fair. So if you do the natural log, the ln on the right, you have to do the natural log on the left. And if you want to get these actual values, you can, but you can also just simplify, you know, do the math and say that, you know, you just want to divide by the ln of 1.247 on both sides. This technically goes bye-bye because it's the same thing, and now you're left with just x equals. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug that in, x equals, so I'm going to take the ln of the first number that I had, the 1.55, close that parenthesis up, divided by the ln of the second one. Ah, that's really, really, really close to a whole number. That is 2. Generally, your orders should be either very close to a whole number or a distinct fraction. Like 2.5 would be 2.5. Um, so just watch out for that. So I'm just going to cut that off and say that this is uh, raised to the second. So that means that this x value was a 2. So to get my specific rate law, all I'm just going to do is just plug in that 2 for the x. And now I have my specific rate law. So that's the answer for the first part, this right here. right? What's the rate law? The rate law is rate equals k times the concentration of q raised to the second. And now it says, what is the order of the reaction with respect to q? The order with respect to Q, 
This is a fancy way for just saying, what is Q's order? And we just found that Q's order is number two. So you could say that it's second order. So that's the answer to the second part. And now we're done with A. So now we move on to B. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just put a line right here. And letter B says we want to find that rate constant. Now remember the rate constant is the K value. Now different teachers maybe want you to do this differently, but majority of the time, uh, teachers or professors, they're cool with, you know, just having you pick one trial. Uh, some textbooks uh, might teach it to you as you have to find the K for all three trials and then find the average to get a rate constant, but the K values between the trials are so very similar that the, the average is going to basically be the same as the trials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix and match. Since I use trial one and two to find the rate law, I'm going to use trial three to find the K value. You can totally do that. And if you want, try to find the K value from a different trial. The K value should be relatively the same at the end of the day. And now all we're going to do is we're just going to use the rate law that we just found out and use the information from one trial to find the K value. So here we go for trial three. Uh, rate equals, so 2.94 times 10 to the negative second equals the K value times the concentration of Q for trial three, Q was 0 0.357 and this is all raised to the second. So we can just raise that to the second, 2.94 times 10 to the negative second equals 0.357 raised to the second, 257, yep. And I get 0 0.127449 and that's times by K. So we just solve for K, divide by that number on both sides, the 0 0.127449 on both sides, 0 0.127449 on both sides, and we will get a K value. So K equals 2.94 times 10 to the negative second. I'm going to divide by that answer, and looks good to me, press enter, and I guess three sig figs, so we'll say 0 0.261, no, 0 0.231. But now here comes the thing, guys. Your units of K, your rate constant units, will change depending on what your overall order is of your whole entire rate law. So instead of trying to plug in units for your rate law and try to cancel out units, my suggestion is to just know your overall uh, units of K with respect to the overall order. So if you want to find an overall order, overall just basically means sum. So add up all the orders that you got. But in this case, in my rate law, the only order, remember, they're just the exponents. I just have the one exponent. It's a two. So that's the overall order for this uh, reaction. And if you have an overall order of two, your unit of K is generally going to be molarity to the minus one. That means one over molarity. And just make sure if they gave you molarity, it's going to be molarity. But if they gave you ATM, it's going to be ATM to the minus one. And then it's going to be time to the minus one. So always look at your rate values for that specific time value. And in this case, they gave us seconds. So the units for K would be 0 0.231 molarity to the minus one, and then seconds to the minus one. But if they gave you hours, it would be hours to the minus one. Minutes, minutes to the minus one. And that is the answer for this. Oh, yeah. I hope this helped. These are these are long, but they're well worth it because probably, you know, on a test or quiz, if they give you free response, this is totally going to be a free response. It's a pretty standard question to give you trials and then find the rate law. So make sure you guys know this, okay? Proud of you guys, and you guys are working hard. 
Um, thank you so much for coming here to view the videos and for sticking all the way to the end. You guys are awesome and greatly appreciated. Thank you so, so much. And I'm so glad to hear from the comments that, that I see that, um, you know, you guys are doing well in your classes out there. So keep studying hard, okay? Always keep learning. And I'll talk to you in the next lesson. Um, yeah, check the channel out. We got other uh, subjects to help you out in physics and math at the moment. More um, subjects coming your way. And you could also check the links in the description. We drop goodies from time to time, depending on, you know, any updates on our end. Uh, so, yeah, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye.